Hey, it's Ryan with QLZ back in the uh, the green room today. We're talking to a guy who's got a great name, Ryan Jesse. You're going to hear him on the air spotlight uh, this upcoming Tuesday, the 15th, 8, uh, 8.30 in the morning, uh, Central Time, a uh, song called Spit Cup. And, and Ryan, how you doing, man? We've been kind of talking a little bit, kind of get, getting to know you a little bit. So how you doing, man? How's Nashville today? How are you, man? Good. How's Nashville today? It is gorgeous. That is why I'm outside trying to enjoy the last bit of uh, warm weather we're going to have before it turns into a desolate gray wasteland of winter down here that it tends to do. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So again, man, you have a you have a new song out. Uh, well, it's not out yet. It's out this Friday. Uh, probably only a handful of people have really heard it. It's a track called Spit Cup. Again, I told you it's a song right in the air to spotlight uh, coming up here in the next couple of days but before we get rolling i, I always check socials and whatnot uh, apparently you have a lot of imposters out there they're the fucking bane of my existence dude i i it's like part of my routine now like i wake up and i have to check socials and stuff and there's like a million notifications of these fake ryan jesse's uh reaching out to fans with like hello adorable fan hello dear and and whatnot and trying to get money from them and Unfortunately, uh, a lot of them buy into it for some reason. And uh, I think there's like, there's probably close to about a hundred grand or so that like I know about oh that I've gosh. been like emailed that has been like sent out to these imposters um, pretending to be me. And I'm like, I, I'm like, guys, I don't, I had to make a big post about it the other day. And I was mm-hmm. like, I don't ask for money from fans. Like, I just want you guys to listen to my music and spread it around. So it's been pretty nuts. But uh, yeah, they're like AIing old videos of me now and changing the the mouth and moving it around and sending it to people. It's, it's pretty wild, dude. So do you, in a weird way, do you feel like you've made it almost now that you, you're getting spam accounts? And, and dude, AI is wild. Like, it, it's crazy. I mean, between the photos and, and graphics and whatnot you can make, there's some bands that are doing, like, AI music videos. In a weird way, do you feel like you've made it now that you're being uh, impostered so much? I don't think so because okay. I, still, I still rent my house. So okay. uh, I, don't, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> I guess once, I, once I buy a house, I'll think I made it. Mm-hmm. But, um yeah, no, it's pretty nuts, dude. I've like I have a, a bunch of artist friends that like some of this has happened to, but like not at the scale that it's happening to me. So I don't know why I'm so so lucky that this has happened yeah. to me. But uh, here we are, and I'm just trying to trying to deal with it, and try to ignore it as much as I can because I do feel bad. I mean, like it's like I'm not trying to take advantage of anybody. I'm just out here trying to make music and you know, live a normal life essentially as much as I can away from the craziness that is the music industry. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been weird. You know, they try to tell you to put as much as yourself as a person out there to, you know, explain who you are as a person beyond the artist. And like, sometimes I like, you know, stop myself from doing that because of this, you know, like any, I get people messaging me that, you know, they're, talking about like my mom and my dog and stuff like that to them. And I'm like, dude, I like, it's like, there's no privacy anymore. And it's like kind of scary. And I'm like, shit, this sucks. (laughs) Yeah, dude, it's, it's incredible. But I know you, I saw you had that post up on Facebook and I figured if anything, you know, we'll maybe bring a little levity to it. Also a nice reminder for people that it's not you like shine down just had to do that again the other day. Like they're like, Brent does not have a personal Facebook account. And I think they've posted this like three or four times. Dude, it's, it's pretty alone. wild, and I figure at some point it's going to have to stop, but then now hearing that Shinedown still has to do it, I guess there's just no hope, so that's yeah. sick. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. I'm just – I guess I have to eventually – well, hopefully my accounts will be verified soon and people yeah. will realize that, like, no, it's not me. But then again, you know, here we are again with Shinedown. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I just hope at some point people realize that, like, you know, stop sending money to people you don't know on the Internet or that you've never met in person. So uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's it's a great lesson. Again, I figured, again, well, I figured we could probably joke about it a little bit, but also it's a nice reminder for people that, hey, like, stop falling for the scams. Uh, that'll probably be the only reason the scams ever go away is if people stop, is if people stop sending the money. So yeah, let's try yeah, if, you, if you don't know someone personally, don't send someone money via the Internet. Lesson yeah. number one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good it's a good rule to follow it's a good way to keep uh keep money in your pockets and you and i were talking a little bit uh, especially in this economy yeah. holy shit <laughs> i know put Just that money towards groceries pull up, shows, pull up the shows buy music through verified sources on the internet yeah. and uh buy merch through verified sources yeah. but 
Venmo and all that shit, do not do that. We, we as yeah. artists will not ask you for money as fans. We just love your support and just want you to be involved with the music, and that's it. There we go. Keep it nice and simple. Again, come out to a show, buy buy some merch, and put that money towards groceries. That's that's a little Hell bit. Oh yeah, dude, I eat a lot, so we need that. Yep. <laughs> what's a, what's a, what's a how many calories you eat in a day? You're like in the Michael Phelps plan where it was like what like ten thousand calories for him at some point. Oh, I wish I could do that. No, that, I uh, I'm I'm kind of dieting down right now, okay. and uh, I'm like at you know, like twenty four, twenty five hundred calories, and I'm starving. So I have, okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No. yeah some point michael phelps well I, I think i'm too old for that now at this point but you and i were talking a little bit too kind of about your your history of music and this is the first time that you've gone to active rock radio with the song you've done some some stuff you know through apple and charts like that you've been in a metal band you've done you've done country kind of like tell me a little bit uh more about kind of your journey just in this music industry and now you're finding yourself in in active rock radio yeah um super excited to be uh welcome to rock radio you know i grew up on bands like sevenfold and slipknot and um you know, now being able to be a part of that is an honor uh, for me. But yeah, I started my journey. I guess I was like 19. I joined a band. I was playing guitar in a, in a metal band and uh, we had some successes. We were together for uh, about five or six years uh, before we disbanded. And um, I decided to move down into Asheville and uh, kind of do my own thing and um, pursue a different avenue with uh, within country. But uh, rock and roll is just in my bones. It's who I am. And um decided to kind of pivot a little bit and I just, I don't like genres. I feel like, especially in this day and age where everything's like at your fingertips, like, you know, just my favorite artists were always just artists. And I feel like yeah. that's kind of what makes them as, you know, the iconic names that they are. They don't just fit one description, you know, I mean, Sevenfold's last record had classical pieces on it. They were always a, a band that was known for, um, you know, stretching the boundaries of what metal and rock and I mean, Dear God was a country song, you know, off of the yeah. self-titled. So that and then you got guys like Post Malone and everybody that just does what they do as, as an artist. So I don't necessarily like categorizing myself as just one genre. I just want to be an artist. And that's how I introduce myself at shows. And uh, fusing genres has kind of been like my thing. So trying to stick to that and uh, see what happens. And hopefully I'm, you know, welcomed by uh, these different communities within country and rock. And so far it's been, it's been cool. It's been, uh, we've been pretty successful with it. So that's what I was going to ask you kind of, how's the welcome been so far? Obviously it's very new for you to come in, you know, to the active rock kind of world, but kind of how's the, how's the welcome been for you? Is it, a lot of, I feel like rock and metal, it's a pretty open community for the most part. So. Yeah, there's definitely some gatekeeping, but I yeah. feel like it's been much less than I expected. You know, I definitely got some shit when I um, I put out a song called You're Not God in March. And when I was teasing it, um, the song was sonically formulated basically off of like the sound of Slipknot and also like the sound of Jason Aldean. And a lot of people didn't like that, mm -hmm. but there was much more that did. And it was kind of one of those things where it was like one of the the reoccurring comments that I got was like, this is how I grew up, but this is the sound, the style of music I grew up listening to. Like, thank you for making this. So it was something that was really cool to see that like, yeah, there's, you know, there's metalheads out there in the country and they mm -hmm. want to hear stuff like they grew up like, but they don't have that just yet. So it was kind of an avenue that I guess hasn't really been, you know, gone down just yet. Yeah. Um, and again, I feel like, we're seeing it. We're seeing a lot of cross genres falling in a verse. I mean, it's probably the biggest band out there right now that blends so many different things together. Um, oh, yeah. So you're seeing it. It's uh, Ronnie. Ronnie's a friggin' genius, man. He's yeah. so talented. And it's just so cool to like see people accepting of that. And I always just say, it's just like, if you don't like it, there's so many other friggin' songs that come out a day. Like, just go listen to something else. Like, why are you sitting there commenting shit on YouTube? Like, go get a hobby. I know, <laughs> dude. I, YouTube, I know. I'm with <laughs> YouTube is a way. That's where like all the shit talkers are. That's the that's the wasteland of shit talkers. YouTube. Oh yeah, there's some keyboard yep. warriors on YouTube. They're much uh they're much nicer on um, TikTok and uh, Instagram, especially because they usually have a, a personal profile attached to it. But YouTube, there's always that guy with like two subscribers and no profile picture that's like talking shit. Like this is metal. This is not country, and it's like, dude. <laughs> Listen to some other shit. Get out of here. 
he's got like 15 numbers in his username where it's like it's like alf like then you know 1792 or something goofy oh, yeah. shit like that yeah. yeah he just like gets off like that and it's like you know the guys like that i'm just like man praying for you to find some happiness pal if this is all yeah. you got you know it's a very bleak outlook on life <laughs> and you make a good point dude like there's so many avenues out there for music i feel like it's one of the things like even we see an active rock radio right now like there's so much music coming at us and there's only so many currents you can play you know in a, in a day or whatever else in your categories and it's like there's so much just for us to pick from in the in the radio world in general so if you're not happy with what you're hearing i've never said that it's kind of like people that watch shit that hate stuff i'm like why do you hate watch something i'm like i would just rather go watch something that i enjoy yeah i personally just kind don't of move on with my life and be in a better mood some people i mean they, they you know the saying goes misery loves company and some people yep. just get stuck in that i guess and you know that's that's how they live their lives and if that's how you want to do it that's great but you take that shit over there i don't want to deal with it yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. Th so good lessons we've learned so far today. You have a bunch of spammers. Don't send people inter money on the internet. Try to find a different avenue. Get out of your misery rut. So I think we're solving some good problems here, Ryan. Uh, your track called uh, Spit Cup is out this Friday. Yeah. Uh, we're airing it. We're airing it Tuesday morning. Uh, excited for it. 8.30 a.m. Central Time uh, here. And uh, what do you want us? What do you want our listeners to know about it? Obviously, it's a couple more days until the track is actually out. I've listened to it a couple of times. Uh, what do you want our listeners to know uh, about this song? Um, it's just, it's one of those high energy songs and, um, I've had a, uh, I've had a common theme recently, I guess, with like toxic relationships and, uh, from, you know, stuff that I've been through. And that's, uh, one of the songs that was kind of born from all of that. And, um, it's, you know, <laughs> it's kind of a, uh, telling a, telling a girl that you're not her spit cup where like, you know, chicks don't usually dip or, you know, like, or kind of yeah. like that. It's one of those funny, it's kind of got a weird got a weird thing to it but it definitely pops out i mean you see the name and it's just like what the hell is that about so it's kind of one of those uh kind of sh shocking to see i guess a little jarring to the ear at first but that's uh i just like like to stir shit up and spark interest with people i guess and uh hope people like what i'm doing musically so I just wanted to get as heavy as we could with it and push the boundaries exactly and again you see a song called spit cup and it's like well the dude's not talking about just, you know, a, a cup that he's spitting into. Like there's a, there's actual, there's an actual, you know, like there's an actual meaning behind this, which like, just pay attention to the lyrics. Cause you know, when we get, when we get stuff worked to us, it's like, Hey, this song is called this. And it's like, all right, you know, being in radio, as long as I have, you try to not have any preconceived notions about anything, just seeing a song title. It's like when I hear a song for the first time, I usually, I have a blank, a blank background behind me and just usually headphones on or big speakers. Cause I'm like one, I don't even want to see the music video first time i listen to a song because i don't want to have any any other influences i just want to hear the song and i feel like the way you kind of describe it it's like yeah it's like okay you see the song it gets people talking but like actually just listen to it because there's an actual there's an actual lesson yeah. behind it and i mean that's that's the beauty of music is you know that's why i try not to label stuff with genres or really tell too much about you know what it is because a song could have a different meaning to every single person that mm -hmm. listens to it and you know when you allow the listener to kind of paint that picture it's kind of like reading a book versus watching the movie you know you're gonna everybody's gonna see the book differently in their heads and you know they're gonna put their personal experience into it and um that's that's the beauty of music and that's what i think is so cool about you know doing this and seeing the response from all these different people and you know fans of country music fans of rock music and everybody's just got a different story and you know if they can relate to it and listen to the music that's that's what i'm here to do and i'm doing my job yeah when it comes to music kind of again you've you've been in this industry long enough you started at 19 years old you know that things are probably different now than when you're 19 you know when albums kind of ruled the world on things and i still love getting full-length records i still i still love that still love picking up full-length albums Kind of what does your your music schedule look like maybe for the rest of this year early in the next year kind of what do you want to do do you want to do, are you gonna do singles ep album kind of what's what's your yeah i would, I would like? love i would love to do an album because i'm the same way where like you know one of my favorite artists put out an album i always wanted to listen to it top to bottom you know because mm -hmm. uh, that's how an album should be it should tell the story the whole way through basically it's like a long song essentially yeah um but i guess just with the climate of you know how people consume music these days it's kind of tough doing that and um you know just from the business side of stuff it just makes more sense to do uh singles and give people like little bitty pieces of uh mm -hmm. your work a little bit more frequently so 
we've been doing kind of like between every four to six weeks, rolling a single out. So we got this one coming out on Friday and then uh, we're going to have another one coming out in uh, mid November. And then we should have another one coming out uh, beginning of December as well. And um, then I'm taking a break and I'm okay. going to be off of social medias for at least a week or two uh, while I enjoy the holidays okay. with my family and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we've been we've been busy. It's been a year of grinding, uh, writing a lot of songs. I have so many songs that I want to put out that um, we're hoping we can get enough out. But, you know, when you I think I've written over 100 songs this year alone. So okay. it's kind of oh. tough to put that many songs out and, you know, have uh, yeah. have people listen and still pay attention. <laughs> yeah. It's well, do you have a music video or anything coming out for Spit Cup or kind of any, any more plans? You know, obviously you're going to radio with it. Any more kind of bigger, bigger plans for that or what you want to do? So the way that I've noticed it, at least at this stage with, you know, being a newer artist, it's um, it's tough to get a music video going and get, you know, they're expensive. You know, I'm all independent. Yeah. I don't have a label funding anything right now or pushing any marketing dollars. So it's all just been like social media. So the way that I started doing content, because that was apparently how we had to start doing things was TikTok and Instagram. And at yeah. first I was hell bent against it. And I was like, I don't want to <laughs> sit there in front of my phone and my truck and tell people what the song's about and hope they care. Yeah. But coming from the metal and rock world, uh, the background that I have, we used to, you know, shoot music videos for everything, right? And that was always fun because there was always, you know, a visual behind it and stuff like that. And two of my best friends growing up were music video directors. I have a buddy that shoots from Ashes to New and Attila and all kinds of nice. uh, big bands. So I kind of learned a little bit from them with like, you know, lighting and like set design and stuff like that. So... I just decided to go out and get a camera and some lights and basically do it myself. And I just make little mini music video sets and we do, you know, full takes of the song and different locations with different looks that I feel uh, visually fit the sonics of the song. And I chop it up and I send it out there to the world and see if they dig it or not. And uh, it's, it's been working. So nice. That's been that's been the route for now, but yeah, I've always been the guy that's always wanted to do these crazy, crazy music videos. Mm -hmm. so maybe one day we'll start uh, yeah, rolling those out when we have the means to. That's awesome. I I don't dude. It's um I think Islander the last uh, when I talked to Mikey a couple of months ago, uh, their last music video I think they just shot on his iPhone. And dude, it's, it's, like, it's yeah. pretty nuts what you can do these days. One of my favorite examples is John Mayer's new light video. Do you okay. ever see the video? Mm -mm. No. It is so ridiculous, and it has millions and millions and millions of views on uh, YouTube. Basically, the story behind it was like the label uh, didn't approve his budget for the video, and he got pissed, and he said, all right, well, then I'm going to do this. And he <laughs> it's just like they're on tour, and he went into like some random little like hole-in-the-wall place that like makes like music videos for kids and stuff. Okay. And they just made it so obnoxious, and he's like in like Africa in one scene with this like terrible green screen behind okay. it wave into a giraffe and then like there's another he comes up from the other side and waves back to him and it's just so ridiculous that it has like it's like one of the most streamed music videos on youtube that's awesome I'm, um, i think it costs him like a thousand dollars like if really that, yeah wow. all right i've never watched that I'll, I, when we're done i'm gonna check that out because that's interesting um again man i told you a lot of this interview today too it's the chance to get to know you kind of your story uh, again man with you being new and and so our listeners can can find some stuff to relate to you about you mentioned Event Sevenfold. You mentioned Slipknot. Uh, what are the kind of bands that made you want to get into rock and metal or, or get into a band yourself? Obviously, those, those are two big ones. But are there anywhere you're like, man, that's the band that makes me want to go. Yep, that's what I want to do for a living. It was it was Sevenfold Backcountry okay. back when uh back when MTV was still playing music videos yeah. and you know they were a thing. Um, I remember I was probably like 11 or 12 and I was getting ready for a basketball game. And I had MTV on in the background and, you know, they had like all the pop songs going on and stuff. And then all of a sudden, you know, you hear the start of what backcountry is come on and shadows start screaming and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I turn around, I'm watching this video and then there's just these dudes like tattooed and ripping guitars in a desert with like, you know, a convertible and mm -hmm. models around. And as a 12 year old dude, I was like yeah i want to do that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i think i got a uh i got a guitar for christmas that year and you know started getting some lessons and whatnot and started playing music and then it just 
fell in love with it and it's a uh, it's become a I guess a part of who I am now. I can't go more than a few days without picking up the guitar and playing. And I like kind of withdraw, like like a physical withdrawal <laughs> from it. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a that was definitely my moment where I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, and kind of just never looked back since. It's awesome. Again, you mentioned you're an album guy. I'm an album guy. Every time somebody comes on new for the first time, I always like to ask him your favorite complete records, your favorite no skip albums of all time. Just Used to be a blog, and I used to live in Wisconsin. Told you, you know, it was cold as shit, and I'm trying to get used to, you know, actually being warm here and not freezing my ass off. I used to be a blog post. It's called Favorite Fives. If you can think of five, great. If it, you got more or less, that uh, that's fine as well. But some of your favorite uh, no skip records of all Ooh. time. So definitely, I'm definitely a live guy too. Um, okay. One of my favorite records, just top to bottom, on a long drive, is John Mayer's uh, live album in Los Angeles. You just throw that on in the car and you can just go mm -hmm. forever. I feel like it's almost like listening to a podcast. Um, Sevenfold's uh, self-titled, The White Album. Yeah. I'd say Slipknot's Point Five, The Gray Chapter. Okay. Um, I'd say this is tough. This is tough. Put me on the spot with this one. I know. Every, everybody gets put on the spot now. So unless, unless you, unless <laughs> I love it. Unless I interview, unless I interviewed you in uh, in Wisconsin and, and actually had to do a blog post on it, it's everybody. It's been I, you're, I think you're probably about the hundredth person I think I've asked since I've since I've been here on on interviews. Again, it used to be a blog post where you know, hey, think about it, but then I tried out a few people and they did well with it. So it's like, all right, now everybody gets this question the first time they come on. All right, well, I'm going to cheat then, and I'm going to look at my right. phone right now. That's why. Uh, That's fine. Awake, awakened as I lay dying. Uh, okay. Record from 2012. You're not the first person to look at their phone on this, so you're good. Other other people have done that, so, all right, so cool. yeah, it's cool. all good. I'm not the only cheater. That's yeah. Great. You're not the only yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say probably Asking's. Uh, I believe it's their self-titled record. Is the one that Danny? Yeah, 2017 when Danny came back. That one was kind of okay. iconic. That was cool. And then let's throw one more in because I don't know where we're at right now on numbers. I think you're at five, but if you want to throw a six one in, you're you're definitely more than welcome to. An honorable mention. Yeah, an honorable mention. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna go Lamb of God Sacrament. All right, yeah. there we go. Redneck. There Especially we go. Redneck Live. There you go. Insane. So, in case anybody's wondering if you actually enjoy metal or not, I think we pretty much determined that for today. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. I, yeah, uh, yeah, just because you did country doesn't mean you can't be a metalhead. I'm so. a metalhead through yeah. and through. I'm basically a metal artist that's parading around Nashville that's like accepted as a country artist for some reason. So, All right. <laughs> <laughs> do you have like, do you have like, um, I think you're, you're probably the only other person. The only other person I've asked this to is Royal Lynn because she's doing the same thing. You know, she was in country and she's going into uh, rock. Yeah, and, yeah Royal um, Six. She's super yep, sweet. Dude. Yep. And, uh, you know, I asked her the last time she came on, it's like, Hey, if your country fans kind of followed you over into the, into the rock world. And I went to go see her. She, I know she's on tour with Seether and Skillet saw her last week. And then, uh, went down to St. Louis over the summer to see her. And a lot of people that were there, like knew her older stuff, which I didn't really know her older stuff. I know, you know, for what she's doing now. And a lot of her older like fans that knew her older stuff were there. So like, do you have like country fans out of Nashville that are now following you into this uh, rock and metal journey? Yeah, it's actually kind of kind of interesting, too, because I'll still get a lot of comments when I ask people, you know, where they want to see me live and what songs they want to see me play live. And um, more often than not, they, they tell me some of the original country ones that I put out, which yep. uh, to me, I was like, you know, I was very green in my uh, songwriting journey back then, too. So they're not like my favorites to uh, to play. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've been I've been noticing a lot of people. It's it's pretty 50-50 whenever I ask, you know, do you guys want a country song? Do you want a rock song next? And it winds up being 50-50. So to those country listeners, yeah, we're definitely going to have some country stuff coming out. And uh, don't worry, to rock radio, there's definitely going to be plenty of heavy shit coming your guys' way too. Uh, I love getting heavy and I love getting crazy. So we're going to just kind of blend both worlds and uh, get after it and see what happens. Awesome. I love it, man. Again, uh, Spit Cup, Art Spotlight, 8.30 in the morning, Tuesday the 15th. And uh, Ryan, since you're new on here as well, where can everybody officially follow you on socials? Website, where can they buy merch? Or, or official, the, real yeah. the real places to find you to support you. Um, so my only handle is at Ryan Jesse Music. I have only one yeah. profile on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. I don't ever really use Twitter. 
Um, so those are my my three mains at Ryan Jesse Music. I'm working on getting the blue check <laughs> so yeah. that there will be no discrepancy on you know my page or not. But that's me. And you can uh, order some merch off of RyanJesseMusic.com. Uh, we're gonna get some new designs up there soon, actually, too. And if you're in uh if you're in ever in the Nashville area, we're gonna be uh we're playing at Exit Inn two weeks. My first uh headliner set down there, so awesome. we're excited, man. Very cool, awesome. Well, dude, again, man, Ryan, looking forward to sharing the track with our listeners. Appreciate you taking the time, man. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it.